at um, 5.30, we're going to have with us the uh, IDF spokesperson, uh, Mr. 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 And uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Lerner, he's the uh, IDF spokesperson uh, who is uh, speaking to the international uh, media. Um, as you've seen yourself, we are uh, combating uh, uh, fake news and trying to put out the, the real information out there. And it's really important for us to make sure that we're communicating the facts. Uh, the IDF spokesperson is going to portray some of that. And it's it's going to be half an hour, and there will be at the end, hopefully, if we have uh, enough time, uh, for questions. Um, questions will take both from here and from, from home. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, continue to Amos Gilad. And my phone with all the information on Amos Gilad because he's, he's done so much. I, I, it's on the phone, I can't remember everything. Um, uh, Amos Gilad uh, is really the, the person who has the most information to give about the um, uh, situation between uh, our, uh, the Israeli state and the Palestinian. And um, he will be with us for about uh, 40 minutes. Uh, taking into consideration that uh, he will give at the end like 15 minutes time for questions. So hopefully that will be uh, enough. We're also going to be joining uh, uh, with us uh, a family member um, uh, that has uh, have his brother and, and uh, his uh, two sons um, taken uh, is hostage uh, to Gaza. He's going to be speaking uh, about their situation, about what happened uh, that day, but what they're doing to try to bring it back. Um, and uh, at the end, we're going to conclude. The ambassador is going to be speaking. We're going to be having, uh, uh, hopefully, for some uh, Q and A. Um, and that is the the night that is uh, playing for us tonight. Uh, the end if you want i believe the the food is still going to be there waiting for you um cool well yeah um before we begin with our uh, first um speaker uh if you have any if you want to, to go to the toilet because we have a few minutes before he begins uh toilet or water now's the time uh if you have uh questions about the agenda now's the time Questions for myself, not at the time. None. Okay. So I'm going to be, my phone is somewhere. I'm going to be checking uh, on our first host because he just called. Did, did you talk to him? If he can talk off the earlier, we can say. We already, almost get up there. Okay. Oh, we can. Uh, we can show him to them. Peter Lena. Almost get up there. Almost I'm going to get uh, my phone and get this. Hello. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This meeting is being recorded. So we will share with you afterwards the recording. Okay. If you could please put your phones on the Hi, Peter. Hello. Hi. Hello. Peter, you can start. We're with you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this invitation. I will try and tell you a brief overview about uh, how we got here, where we are, and perhaps where we're going. I think uh, the initial stages obviously are, are known to you, but just to set the stage so that we're all on the same page. Um, the first issue is the attack on the 7th of October was a strategic attack, an attack unfathomable and unexpected uh, in, uh, in a way that um, Israel uh, expected um, Hamas to want to continue to rule the Gaza Strip, 
And uh, what they did on October was a clear uh, de declaration of war, a mobilization unexpected and in its magnitude and in its implementation. Uh, on the 7th of October, across over 20 points of uh, breach across our border with, uh, with Gaza, um, uh, hundreds of terrorists poured into our borders uh, in a combined effort across the fence, but also above the fence with paraglider and attempting to advance at sea with fast boats um, heading north from south uh, from the coast of Gaza in actually into the um, uh, southern Israel communities of uh, Zikin. Uh, the IDF uh, obviously was faced, uh, was first of all, the IDF was overwhelmed. Uh, we were unprepared. We did not have enough intelligence. Uh, the physical barrier, the fence itself, did not withhold the huge attempt, the massive wave of terrorists that penetrated the border, and the forces on the ground did not did not prevent the uh, uh, brutal uh, infiltration into Israeli communities or into the military bases themselves. Uh, this created um, a very extensive uh, counter offensive by the IDF on the ground in order to seek out the terrorists. Uh, kill them and take re and retake control of the communities and the area and Israeli territory um, uh, in the immediate aftermath. Uh, I can say that um, we are pretty confident that the vast majority of the area now is safe. However, there is still a possibility that there are uh, more terrorists. Five days ago, um, on day 14 of the uh, war, we still had one terrorist that we picked up who was trying to escape back to Gaza. So the main mission of retaking control, clearing the area for ter of terrorists and uh, um, and securing the population uh, was a very, very important part, part of the initial attack on Israel. In the, in the counter strikes, we killed uh, over 800 terrorists and several uh, hundred more escaped back into Gaza. Um, so that is one component of our defensive activities. The second component would be the uh, border fence. So when they penetrated the border, they, they created a potential highway between Gaza and Israel. The IDF has been involved in the last uh, 18 days, 19 days now, in repairing the, the, the barrier, restoring uh, defensive capabilities. And that is for two reasons. First of all, to prevent escape of terrorists that potentially could still be in Israel and we and have been hiding out for the last uh, two weeks, the last two and a half weeks, uh, but also to prevent the potential second wave that Hamas may try and initiate into the heart of Israel. Uh, and so we are uh, rebuilding those capabilities. The, and the third component of our activities in, in Gaza are uh, the offensive activities, how we are striking Hamas. The government has instructed the IDF to destroy and dismantle Hamas. Uh, this is a, a mission that it, the, the IDF has never ever, in all of the conflicts we've had with Hamas in the past 16 years, has never been a strategic goal. That is what the government, this is what separates and differentiates between all of the previous conflicts and this one. A, a, a realization that the system, the paradigm needs to change. A terrorist organization that received so much power, uh, used abused the power of government in order to mobilize a terrorist army against civilians uh, in Israel to butcher, murder, massacre, uh, uh, decapitate, rape, and abduct uh, is a terrorist entity that can no, can no longer be allowed to govern the Gaza Strip as a staging ground for terrorism against Israel. So we are currently in the, the effort of destroying, dismantling Hamas in its entirety. And when I say in its entirety, I'm talking from Yechia Sinwar, who is the prime minister of Hamas, but ultimately the mastermind of the massacre, all the way down to the individual terrorists that breached the perimeter, belonging to Hamas's special forces, the commando unit, the Nukba force, and we are hunting them down, taking them out, and destroying their capabilities. The second component of uh, it, beyond the issue of leadership is also the planners, those that plans the, op the operation against Israel, and also the, the institutions of Hamas that have given them the power to run this terrorist operation, to run their institution of terrorism. 
Uh, and so we are currently on day 19 of destroying that, taking it place piece by piece, taking it apart. And we will continue to do so until we meet our goal. The IDF, in order to implement its mission, has been approved to recruit reservists. And I can uh, share with you that we have recruited some 300,000 reservists in Israel uh, for the IDF. That is the largest recruitment of reservists in the history of the IDF. Uh, and they, have, they are across services and across different territorial areas, territorial controls. So they are for the Air Force, for the Navy, for the ground forces, and for our home front command. They are also for the Southern Command, predominantly to the Southern Command, but also for the Northern Command, as we face increasing hostilities from Hezbollah in the north. Um, the reservists uh, are probably the, the biggest question that people are, keep asking me over the last 24 hours is when is there going to be a ground operation? Uh, the ground operation will be in when two conditions have been met. First, the government instruction to mobilize. Uh, sending young men and women into Gaza is not an easy decision. The government needs to think about that. Of course, the IDF uh, needs to be prepared for any decision. And that is the second component, the optimal operational conditions for a ground mobilization. So we are seeing some of our efforts now are striking terrorist infrastructure that could potentially impede on a mobilization on the ground force. So I will not say when the to expect a ground force operation, but indeed we are preparing for that eventuality and we have the tools, the knowledge, the know-how and the intelligence in order to implement that. Uh, a second question that people keep asking me, and I'm sure this is interesting to you, is, okay, what about the hostages? Hamas are currently holding 222 Israelis and foreign nationals hostage. Um, they are the top of our priority, and indeed the IDF is employing all different types of capabilities in order to find and, uh, and, and locate them. Uh, in parallel, there are diplomatic efforts, as maybe you are aware, four hostages have been released up until now. Um, uh, Judith, sorry, Judith um, uh, Lith, uh, and and Yochevet and Natalie and um, I'm sorry, I lost the last name. In anyhow, in anyhow, the the hostages that have been released is all part of Hamas's uh, uh, psychological terrorism. Um, they are not doing it for humanitarian reasons. They are doing it in order to exert psychological pain to. Israelis, to Israeli families, and Israeli society at whole. And I would add that um, while they have re uh, released four people, there are still 222 in their hands, uh, the youngest at the age of nine months, the eldest over the age of 80. Um, so these are the people that uh, are, have, are, uh, we, are, we are facing. This is the situation we are currently uh, enduring. Um, if I move forward and, and, and try and so the hostage issue is a, an issue of core concern. I won't be able to elaborate any more than I've said on this issue, but I would say that there is a uh, uh, the efforts in order to bring them home are extensive. We call on the International Committee of the Red Cross to really to visit them. Uh, we demand that they have access to them, and of course we demand that Hamas release them immediately. They are responsible for the well-being of the 222 Israelis and foreign nationals that they are holding. With regard to uh, the regional ramifications of our operation against Hamas, of our war against Hamas, uh, we are concerned about the increasing attacks from Hezbollah on our northern border. We have had a um, increase in activities, increase in hostilities, including anti-tank guided missiles fired at the forces and civilians along the border, including mortar fire, rockets, machine gun fire, and also uh, sniper fire. In order to give us broader uh, operational freedom, we have evacuated all of the communities, so over 30 communities across the northern border uh, in a radius of around five kilometers uh, uh, from the border. And that is in order to keep them out of harm's way. We've also evacuated the town of Kiryat Shmona, which is a, a town of some 25,000 people. 
uh, and that gives us the operational capability to 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 operate uh, with, uh, while minimizing civilian casualties and and potentially putting people at risk. I would say that there are there is a core concern with the with regard to what's going on on the border with Lebanon, primarily because there Le the Hezbollah is operating within a sovereign state, and our message to Lebanon is it is your responsibility that uh, Lebanon does not get drawn in to a broader uh, uh, conflict. Um, they need to be very cautious about what's happening. They need to take control of what's happening in, um, in, the, in the southern Lebanon so that it doesn't spin out of control. I would add to Hezbollah, but also to other terrorist organizations that think that while Israel is tied up, uh, or the IDF is operating against Hamas, would be a good opportunity to take advantage of it uh, uh, and perhaps uh, conduct other attacks. We've had some rocket fire yesterday from Syria that they need to watch very carefully how we are dismantling and destroying Hamas step by step in Gaza and think very carefully if they want to cross that threshold and jeopardize their own uh, uh, reality on the ground. Uh, Israel does not want to have a multi-war or a, or a two-front war. Um, but we are prepared to do so. Many of those 300,000 reservists that we have recruited for uh, reserve duty are indeed reinforcing the North and are prepared for any eventuality with uh, Hezbollah. Um, the question, the strategic question, what will be, what will happen the day after we succeed in our mission in destroying Hamas uh, is, is a, an important question that needs to be asked. And I would say the most important thing to say is any reality uh, that is different from the reality where Hamas can govern the Gaza Strip as a terrorist uh, staging ground for against Israel is better than the current reality. We have uh, the primary responsibility to restore safety and security to the people of Israel. And I would say on a personal note, we have a very strong sense of failure for not preventing uh, the massacre of the 7th of October. And it is our responsibility to restore that security, but also confidence in our ability to do so. Um, I think this is what I wanted to uh, open my briefing with, a very short 15-minute uh, briefing. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer um, to the embassy staff, I guess, that you manage it. And, and please feel free. Uh, thank you. Um, do, do we have any questions? Yeah. yeah. OK, I, I saw the thing first, and then we'll go here. Uh, so you said that you are prepared for all the corner fight from all sides. So we are already seeing the point of exhaustion and the point of resources being used. Do you, are you are you anticipating a war from other fronts other than Gaza? Thank you. I, um, if I understood the question, are we anticipating a, a broadening scope of the war on other fronts other than Gaza? I would say, um, as, as I indicated, there is increased tensions on the border with Lebanon from Hezbollah. Uh, we have had um, a couple of incidents from Syria, including rocket fire and mortar fire. Um, we hope that, that, that there will not be an, a broader uh, conflict, but in the military, as we say, hope is not a method. So we are preparing for that eventuality. We are reinforcing our presence on the ground we are making sure the Air Force the, uh, and, uh, is prepared. And I would say any attacks, and in the last 24 hours alone, we've had, we've attacked five different squads that conduct, that were planning to conduct anti-tank uh, guided missile attacks from Lebanon towards Israel, towards our forces. So I would say we have to be prepared for that. Um, uh, and I would say that there is a possibility that that indeed will happen and we are uh, taking the necessary precautions in order to be ready for that. Thank you. We have a question from here, please. Hello, sir. Um, just wanted to ask you about uh, New York Times analysis that recently debunked a widely cited missile video uh, that has been cited by Israel and American officials as in uh, a Palestinian rocket that was misfired. So this video has been debunked. In fact, the analysis says that this happened too far away from the Gaza hospital bombing to have anything to do with that incident. Your reaction on this? 
I think um, I'm trying to weigh on the story that you're asking is the event on the 17th of October relating to what appeared to be a strike or reported by Hamas officials as a strike against uh, a hospital in Gaza. There was no strike. Uh, what happened on the ground was, uh, as such, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad launched over 10 rockets towards Israel in, a, in, an, in an attempt to kill Israeli civilians. One of those rockets misfired and malfunctioned and hit in the parking lot of the hospital. Um, Hamas manipulated the situation and it was widely reported around the world as if Israel had struck a hospital. We knew it was wrong primarily because we do not target hospitals. Um, and secondly, we then went to investigate the situation and the circumstances and we found uh, damning uh, uh, results that identified clearly that there was no IDF operations on the ground based on intelligence, operational data, and aerial footage. We utilized our technology and identified the trajectory of the rockets, where they were launched from, and where and where they, and their path of action. And indeed, they were supposed to, they went over the the hospital. And finally, we intercepted intelligence. Uh, um, Intelligence uh, um, intercepted in intelligence sources uh, that identified a conversation between two Hamas terrorists that basically said Palestinian Islamic Jihad launched rockets at Israel. One of them hit the Al Ahli Hospital. Um, the videos that have that were that were circulated in the immediate after effect of the attack um, supported actually what we were saying. There was no rocket uh, 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 attack by the IDF at the site. And unfortunately, too many of the world media uh, are listening to a brutal terrorist organization taking uh, as if they are a credible source for anything. This is an organization that has no problem butchering and beheading babies. Why should we believe anything they say? They will lie to everybody. They do not care about the truth. All they care about is their mass manipulation. And we need to be very, very wary of whatever they say. Thank you. So I'm Vijay Kumar from the NFA Pulse. Just wanted to understand uh, the service extended by healthcare workers from India to Israel. I didn't get that. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, the the support extended by India. India. Yeah. India. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, the the echo in your room it, it's making me very difficult. Maybe you can write it in the chat. It would be helpful, perhaps. Maybe Peter. Can... Peter, yeah. um, we are going to take a question from here and not uh, from home. So uh, one moment, please, Aditya. Uh, thank you, Peter, for joining us and doing this. Uh, I want to understand from you uh, what's your view on the approach of United Nations at this moment. You've seen. Uh, of reports of the United Nations Secretary General saying that the Hamas terror attack did not happen in vacuum, and there are a strong reaction from the Foreign Minister and the Permanent Representative. Do you think that at a time when the United Nations is doing everything possible for the humanitarian aid to reach Gaza, at the same time they are not doing enough to counter terrorism? Uh, you know, India has also moved in some 25 years back a convention at the United Nations that's been pending forever. So there's no global consensus on developing a definition to counter terrorism. How would you define and see United Nations approach and failure to counter terrorism, at least in this context? Thank you. I think my uh, yeah, colleagues I, uh, would uh, be much better equipped to answer that. But I would say, uh, uh, I would say perhaps one comment regarding to regarding the strategy of the. I think it is imperative that the international community as we've seen a huge understanding by many world leaders rallies around the idea that Hamas have to go. Um, this, is the, this is the fundamental change that needs to happen. This is what is required from the world at this time. All of the international humanitarian organizations operating in Gaza need to be part of the solution, not part of extending the problem. Uh, if Hamas remains in control, it sends a very clear message that this is the new norm of terrorism, and we can never, and no free nation can be safe in light of this, uh, these types of actions. So I would say that is that is 
my comment, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of Israel has a much broader uh, response regarding the United Nations. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take one question from home, and then we'll continue here. Um, I have a question. Uh, you are, uh, the US could not eradicate uh, Taliban in 20 years and ISIS subsequent, subsequently. What is the end state you are working towards? So obviously, I think uh, there is a very core difference between Israel and the, and the U.S.'s war on terror. Uh, these terrorists are in our backyard. They literally came into the backyards of people. They came into our houses. They came into our kitchens. They came into our bedrooms. There is no alternative but to defeat them and destroy them and make sure they can never wield this uh, uh, sword of death above the head of, uh, of Israel. Uh, and this is why there needs to be the strategic uh, change, uh, uh, the paradigm change that we have not experienced uh, ever, ever before and, and needs to be this substantial change. Uh, it's not what we believe. We know we will defeat them, uh, not necessarily as an ideology, but a, as a territory that is governed as a terrorist launching pad, as, a, as an organization that has utilized the power of government in order to, to rally a, uh, uh, an army of terrorists, in order to butcher, murder, rape, massacre, behead, and abduct. This is the reality. This needs to change, and we will make it change. Okay, thank you. Over there. Uh, many of the international leaders, those who have expressed their support and solidarity with the Israelites, are now talking about a ceasefire, the possibility of a ceasefire. In terms of the idea of strategy, do you see a possibility or condition which is being laid out of a possible ceasefire? Or for you, the elimination of, of Hamas is the end game, and for uh, for that, the ground operation is an imminent possibility or consequent activity? Uh, ceasefire is a term that we are not talking about at this stage. Uh, we are talking about moving forward, taking a war to the enemy, and destroying the enemy so that they can never work. Uh, um, uh, attack Israel ever again. I, I would say that from our perspective, as we see, um, uh, the the reality on the ground is one that needs to be changed from the ground up. And therefore, the humanitarian effort needs to work in tandem with the military effort, indeed. Uh, we are communicating with the international humanitarian organizations on the ground. Uh, we are communicating and engaging with the international community at large. And as I said earlier, the international community needs to be part of the solution, not a part of maintaining the problem. Um, that, is, that is my question. Okay, please. Oh, yeah. uh, Peter, uh, there are certain uh, reports that talk about dissent between political leadership and military leadership there. Uh, first, do you accept it? And what is the kind of light that you want to throw on such kind of reports that are out? Because that has delayed invasion, is what they say. Thank you. The IDF is a subordinate to the government. We have, of course, the ability to say whatever we want to the government, but ultimately it is the government that dictates the end goal, the strategy, and where they want to take us. Our responsibility in this case is to raise all of the issues to the government, and the government needs to dictate when, the, when would be the best time um, uh, to employ or deploy the ground forces from their perspective as a... Uh, continuation of political debate, the political diplomatic intercourse that is taking place in the framework, in the background, and the IDF needs to implement the government's uh, instructions in order to achieve the, uh, the goal of destroying and dismantling Hamas. Peter, Peter, I'm going to stop you for a minute because uh, I, it's hard for us to hear you. No, no, no. One second, please. Uh, please, please continue, Peter. 
Yes, um, so just to weigh back on the discourse between the IDF and the government, of course, we have to, uh, as the IDF, we have to present the, to the government the proposed solutions. They have the responsibility of deciding how and when they want us to mobilize. Our responsibility is to deliver the goods. We are confident in our ability to do so. If there is a ground mobilization, we will utilize the force in order to implement that. Uh, of course, there are other opportunities, and indeed, as famously the uh, military theoretic, uh, theoretician uh, uh, Klauswitz said, uh, war is political intercourse by other means, and the political intercourse needs to be exhausted and uh, before the other means are employed. <laughs> Peter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we seem to have uh, uh, technical issues. Uh, could you please repeat that once more? I hope that this time we'll be able to hear. Yeah, I said that there is a discourse that is, that is taking place between the IDF and the political echelon as expected in any democracy. Uh, it is the political echelon that determines the end goal. It is the IDF that needs to deliver. Uh, that is the, the discourse. There, the, there will always be, uh, there is inherent tension between the two, which is healthy, which is good. Um, but at the end of the day, my role as the IDF is to implement the government's directive. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, I will just take one more question. We'll just take one more question. Yeah. So I don't understand uh, why uh, Israel is looking at destroying uh, the Hamas uh, bases in Gaza. Uh, you know, there are also being conflicting reports from that side saying that buildings are, are you know being destroyed and there are families and children that are dying. So is the uh, is the idea of taking a targeted approach like it has in the past to destroy uh, the Hamas uh, the, the Hamas bases? Or uh, at the moment, it's a full-on ground offensive, and are you going to change that strategy in the future? Thank you for the question. Thank I would you. say primarily, primarily. Hamas has strategically placed all of its assets in the civilian arena. They are all military targets, so when they are locating their explosive drones on the rooftops of houses, they when they position their command and control positions in a high-rise building, they turn that high-rise building into a military target. They position rocket launchers of schools to become a military target. Have used, have abused, and used civilian arena cynically uh, and jeopardizing their own population as well as ours. Our goal is to destroy Hamas, is to sever their abilities and make sure they can never ever challenge and, and, and attack Israel in such a brutal, inhumane way. And that is what we intend. That is what we intend. Okay. Um, Peter, thank you very much for taking the time to meet us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Shalom. Bye bye. Thank you. יש לנו כרגע קצת בעיית אינטרנט, זה בסדר שנשים אותך רק... אוקיי, אנחנו נתחיל, אתה יכול לדבר, תודה שהצטרפת אלינו היום. רגע, אז מה אתה רוצה שאני אעשה בסדר? אתה, אתה יכול להתחיל. כמה זמן הסקירה? Uh, 20 דקות? Uh, יש לנו בסך הכל 40 דקות. Uh, הבנתי שזה uh, 20 או 25 דקות uh, שאתה תדבר, ואז הם uh, ישאלו שאלות משהו כמו רבע שעה. אבל אתה תצטרך להעביר את השאלות, אני לא שומע כלום, זה משהו דפוק. תגיד שוב, סליחה, לא שמעתי. אמרתי שאני את השיחה עם פיטר, אני לא מצליח להבין מילה שם, מה שאומרים. 
הבנתי, אנחנו, אנחנו נוריד את, ה, את הוידאו ונשאר רק על שמה כדי שנוכל לשמוע יותר טוב, בסדר? אין לי בעיה, מה שאתם רוצים, העיקר שזה יהיה טוב. בסדר. אז אתה יכול בבקשה לסגור את המצלמה? אורטונה. רגע, מה, אני אדבר בלי לראות אותך? איזה מין דבר זה? מה, אי אפשר לארגן איזה קו שעובד? אתה יכול להתחיל לדבר, אנחנו שומעים. אוקיי. Hello, my friends from India. I'm very glad to talk to you and to answer your questions, of course. We are facing uh, unprecedented atrocities that have been made by, by Hamas that is uh, equivalent or even worse than uh, ISIS Daesh. Atrocities that included all kinds of terrible terror activities and we don't have any choice rather than... Wait, what are you eating? What is this? רק שנייה, אנחנו עוד שנייה שומעים אותך. לא, פתחתי את המיוט. העברתי לך בקשה לצאת ממיוט, שמתי את כולם על מיוט. אנחנו שומעים אותך עכשיו. אפשר לדבר? כן, תודה. רק תזוזו מהמסך, או אתה תישאר. אוקיי, כן, זה מאוד חשוב לדבר עם הפרס באינדיה. Let's uh, open with some uh, personal remark. I always identified India as one of the greatest friends and allies of Israel. I dealt with the defense intelligence areas, and always I found it outstanding and fascinating, the very qualitative press uh, in India. I always try to meet with uh, journalists in India, and uh, we are considering, based on my long service in the Ministry of Defense and the IDF, we are considering our strategic relations with India as uniquely important, valuable, and contributing to the free world. I would like to share with you deep gratitude Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister, the fabulous Prime Minister, that he embodies the war against terror, against violence, and for the sake of the free world. Um, we appreciate the support by India. I hope, by the way, that Hamas, based on the atrocities, would be included in the blacklist of terror organizations. They are not different from the organizations that have committed the terrible acts of terror like Mumbai. I was in Mumbai, I followed every site that the terror took place. The whole idea of so-called Islamic terror, radical Islamic terror, needs to be defeated. The Americans have done it against ISIS Tan. the new entity that was established at the expense of Syria and Iraq, one third of them. And we need to do the same with Hamastan. They cannot be our neighbors anymore. They have raped women, murdered uh, children, babies, uh, kidnapped um, innocent uh, children and citizens and so on. 
And that's strategically, humanitarily speaking, means that we are determined to destroy them, even if it will take one month, two months, two years. And all their leaders will die. They, they want to go to different world. They will, they will, it will be done. Now, what we need to do now vis-a-vis -vis Hamastan. Hamastan has become axis, part of the axis of evil that consisting of Iran, Hezbollah, Yemen, Syria, Lebanon, parts of it. But the atrocities that have been made, the goal, the strategic goal was based on the orders they got from their commanders is to behead, to commit atrocities in order to break the will of the Israeli people and to ignite multidimensional war against Israel from all directions. I think Hamas have made, has made two mega major mistakes. The first, the atrocities. Can you imagine what they've done? I mean, you can in India because you suffered from terrible his, uh, terror from this school, like I have witnessed again and again in, in Mumbai and other places. And the second mistake that they have the hope to ignite multidimensional front war against Israel. I think the atrocities will lead us, will push us to destroy Hamastan. And, uh, and they will not enjoy multidimensional support by even Iran and uh, Palestine and so on. So our historic mission to the casualties, to the murder, to the fatalities, to destroy Hamastan, to dismantle them as a combination of government, terror organization, social organization, religious organization. By the way, they belong to Muslim Brothers. You cannot find Muslim Brothers in any government. The whole Arab Middle East, is, that is, like uh, it belongs to Muslim Brothers, and Tarduan calls them, uh, uh, I don't want even to repeat how he is praising Hamas. We need, we do have strategic goals. The first is to destroy Hamas. The second one is to enhance our strategic alliance with the uh, United States of America standing behind us, uh, militarily, strategically, politically, psychologically. Great importance to support by India. Always India is considered, at least in, in the Ministry of Defense and all important organs in Israel, Israel is considered a great friend and super, rising superpower. Um, we need to keep the peace between us and uh, Egypt, Jordan, the whole Middle East, and to be able to widen the peace to Saudi Arabia. All together, all together, uh, we, are, we will be part of global war. Yes. Okay. And, uh, 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 כן. מה שומעים? שומעים אותך? אנחנו עכשיו שומעים אותך מצוין האמת. אני שומע. 